Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to this session about Power BI performance. Over the past several years, Power BI has been getting more and more traction. More people are creating Power BI reports these days. But one thing they often don't really keep in mind is the performance, the speed of their reports, whether it's the report rendering time or it's the time to refresh the underly underlying data set. In many cases, they create their report. It works, but it's slow. There are some very easy to apply performance optimization best practices Power BI developers should be aware of. Today's session is all about turning those slow steam locomotives into high speed trains. First, something about myself. So my name is Lou Segers. Uh, I started working in 2016. Um, I'm a consultant for Belgium's Lytics, uh, Microsoft Data Analytics consultant. Uh, working with the whole Microsoft BI stack um, and especially for the last um, three years, I believe, um, I've developed a very strong uh, emphasis on uh, the use of Power BI. I really enjoy working with the reporting tool, uh, speaking about it as well, and of course, writing about Power BI. I believe good health is true wealth. Uh, I enjoy going for a sweaty run or enjoying a gym session every now and then. So I believe that is uh, very important uh, to keep that balance uh, in your life. I enjoy uh, writing some blogs. I enjoy um, giving some speaker sessions just like th this one. Um, in most of the cases, I also write, write some blogs or, or I communicate about um, the speaker schedule on my blog, which is called thedatatrain.be. So if you have some time, make sure to, uh, to visit the website and uh, give me some feedback if you have some. Let's dive into the content now. What are we going to discuss today? Okay, the presentation is uh, divided into three different parts. Parts. The first one is the report best practices I'll be discussing. The second part is how to resolve slow dataset refresh. And the third part is how to evaluate the performance of your Power BI um, report. First one, the first report best practice that I'm going to discuss today is only keep necessary visuals. Please do always overthink any shape, any line that you add to your Power BI report because all of those visualizations, they will take up uh, rendering time. So it will take uh, longer for your report to fully present itself to, to any end users. Two tips that I can give you guys, um, the use of backgrounds is the first one, and the second one is try to stick to default visuals. Let me head over to the demo. Okay, so heading over to Power BI Desktop now. Um, I've quickly assembled the Power BI report relying upon a data set, um, which actually is, uh, is sourced by uh, an Azure SQL database. The Azure SQL database um, uses the sample database that Microsoft delivers, probably one of the most popular um, databases out there. Um, it's called the AdventureWorks database. What did I do? I, um, I uh, loaded in Effect Internet Sales, um, which uh, can be, um, can be uh, viewed uh, from different perspectives, different, different dimensions, being the DIM product, DIM product category, uh, subcategory, uh, DIM customer, DIM sales territory, and of course, um, one of the most important ones, of course, the DIM date dimension as well. Okay, uh, heading over to the report pane, uh, I've quickly um, dragged in some of the visualizations already. Uh, so we have a region chart, we have a line chart, we have a bar chart. Um, these visualizations um, are created, of course, at a very fast pace, but uh, what people tend to do afterwards is they um, yeah, try to make their uh, report a little bit more appealing. So what do, do they usually do? They drag in some uh, rectangles, uh, they put it over here, um, and to make it all a little bit more, um, more yeah, beautiful actually. Um, well, what I can um, tell you guys is all of those uh, visualizations, they take up quite a lot of rendering time, especially if you have a lot of different vis visualizations uh, that, that aren't actually useful, but are still are in the report. What I can suggest uh, you to do is to head over to the paintbrush over here at the page background property, add an image, and then you can select your own Power BI background. So um, I've quickly created this one in PowerPoint. It's not that hard to do actually. 
um, and you can um, you can uh, select it as your page background. The major advantage is, of course, this is just one visualization in the background. Uh, we only have uh, we 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 won't have any additional rendering time. It just simply is there, and it's um, uh, we don't need to spend any rendering time based on a on other visualizations that need to be um, loaded. I've also told you guys that um, try always try to stick to default visuals and um, don't immediately opt for the for the custom visuals. Why? Well, uh, if, when you take a look at this one, um, uh, yeah, w how would you actually load hierarchy slices? Uh, let's say about six to eight months ago. Six to eight months ago, it wasn't even possible to have a slicer uh, which contained hierarchies uh, from a default slicer. For the Power BI default slider, it did not support hierarchies. So what people needed to do was they needed to rely upon a custom visual. Uh, many people actually use the hierarchy slicer, uh, which is a custom visual, uh, which indeed um, gives you the opportunity to have hierarchies within your slicer. Um, at the moment, um, I think it was about six or eight months ago, uh, the um, default Power BI slicer, um, the normal one, this one, um, has been upgraded and now it can actually use the uh, hierarchy that this actually supports uh, using hierarchies within your uh, Power BI uh, uh, filter slicer. Um, why you still should uh, stick to the default, um, to the default um, visualizations, uh, I'll come back to this one at the end of the presentation. There's a major difference in performance, but I of course, I don't want to spoil the fun. Uh, I'll get back to this at the end of the presentation. Arriving at the second repo best practice, always try to avoid both directional relationships. In my eyes, this is the number one performance killer for any Power BI report, especially when you have multiple um, facts. If your data model is relying upon multiple facts, it will qu quickly get confusing for your end users. Um, yeah, what does it actually involve? Uh, well, uh, if you have two different tables and you have a both directional relationship between them, uh, they will filter both of them. So each one will filter the other. Um, yeah, it will take up some time. It, it will slow your data model. It will slow the performance of your whole report. So please do take this into account before applying this. There are also some alternatives um, for the both directional relationships. Uh, for example, you can uh, use two different, um, you can use uh, the DEX function uh, called cross filter, uh, which you can enable or disable any existing relationship or change the, um, the, uh, the properties of this relationship. Or you can set a filter on a specific visual based on, for example, Controse um, measure as well. Those are possibilities that you can um, used to avoid those both directional relationships. Okay, arriving at the third uh, report best practice called base measure. So always try to create a base measure um, which refers to a column value without any logic, any business logic applied at all. Uh, why you should use a base, considering using a base measure? Well, um, it prevents you from breaking any column name changes. It prevents you to, um, yeah, to get some measures out of out of sync. You can reuse the measures um, every single time, so you can reuse measures within other measures. So if you need to make some adaptions later on, you can just um, make the adaptation on the base measure and all the measures that are built up on top of this base measure will be automatically um, showing you the right figures as well. So it uh, clearly enhances maintainability as well. Um, of course, in this case, um, I need to sh show you guys this, how you can um, how you can use Tabular Editor to create your base measure measures in a, in a very fast way. Uh, let's dive into it. Okay, let's dive into the Power BI report once again. Uh, so I just mentioned uh, using Tabular Editor for creating your base measures. Uh, Tabular Editor can actually speed up your report development uh, really, really, really hard. Um, you can simply open Tabular Editor um, by navigating to the external tools and opening Tabular Editor. 
uh, this will actually directly create a connection to your uh, open data model and um, what you will be able to see over here is you will be able to see an overview of all the tables that I just um, showed you guys uh, earlier in the data model uh, and for each one of them uh, for all of those column values uh, we will also have um, the, uh, the the additional metadata so in what format this column actually uh, is stated in what data type uh, what is the actual source field called uh, all of those things are actually contained within this one a very interesting one uh, as well is uh, the uh, the way um, the data was loaded is it direct query is it import um, is also stated uh, over here you can actually adjust your settings um, over here so you can show or hide the metadata as well okay that having said, so um, in a normal situation, what do people tend to do? Uh, okay, I would like to have a measure. I would like to, uh, for the fact internet sales, I would like to have a measure and I would like to sum up um, the, um, for example, the, um, the sales uh, amount. So what do people tend to do? And you create a sum, sum of sales amount equals to uh, sum of sales sum of sales amount okay something like this this is what people tend to do when creating a um, a measure um, first this is called the base measure so no business logic created at all it's just the summing a uh, specific uh, column value uh, I added the underscore um, in front of the measure as well, so it pops up at the uh, as a first um, uh, at, on top of the of the table as well. So um, you can drag this, of course, in your um, in your table over here. Um, yeah, of course, the format is not exactly what we would like to see. Um, for example, you you can change it. Um, that is that it is a little bit. That it looks a little bit different. For example, we would like to see um the euro sign in front of it um okay okay perfect so now we adjust we don't need any decimals for example okay so now we just created our very own measure the sum of our sales amount it took quite some time for just one measure because you also need to set the formatting etc you can also do this uh, within uh, power bi uh, within a tableau editor Heading over to the to the tabular uh, editor, you can immediately see that it, it, it has the same connection. It, it keeps it in sync. So I just created the um, the new sum sales amount measure uh, within Power BI Desktop. It's also visible within tabular editor. Okay, um, what is something very interesting that we, we can actually do? We can also add some advanced scripting over here. Let me quickly uh, make this a little bit bigger so you guys can um, view it a little bit more clear uh, what we can do uh, we can open a specific script I'll quickly navigate to um, the script that I had um, in mind okay so this is a predefined script there are a lot of these uh, snippets that can be found online as well um, there are a lot of um, uh, fully finished snippets which you can um, easily use or rely upon or change yourself uh, based on your preferences so uh, for example this one what does it actually do uh, it just simply adds a measure um, of the selected columns and it adds uh, the um, the yeah, it, it changes the uh, the name into a specific naming convention uh, it creates um, a, a separate display folder which is called measures uh, display folder uh, and it will simply uh, sum up the specific selected column it will also hide the original column so only the base measure will be available okay so um, we can use this script to um, to uh, actually perform the actions for us so what we can do we can head over to for example our sales amount we can go to custom actions create a base measure okay what did it do it exactly did what we told it uh, the the model to do so it it hide it, it hide 
the uh, the column, the sales amount, the original column, and afterwards it created a display folder, and it also created the sum of sales amount measure um, inside of this sales uh, inside of this measure um, folder. Okay. After we uh, click the save button, it will directly be adjusted within our Power BI report itself as well. So it will look the exact same as, as the, the measure that we created uh, manually earlier. Uh, this is very, very useful. Uh, also, you can see that uh, the format string can be adjusted exactly how you would like to see it. Um, you can adjust all format strings, by the way, in, um, in um, Tabular Editor. Um, okay, so this is very useful. Um, but um, yeah, one more thing I uh, forgot to mention actually, you can save uh, this script. So this is a one-time execution of the script. You can save it as a custom action. You saw me uh, earlier, you saw me doing this, go navigate to custom actions and create a base measure over here. Um, it is pretty simple to add this actually. You can just click the plus sign over here, um, add a specific name. For example, uh, this is creating a, uh, base measure measure um, it is applicable on a column that's very important of course and uh, we can just uh, click ok then it will pop up over here under the custom actions and this is exactly what, what we would like to see okay this is very very useful but of course uh, we can do more with tablet editor we have other uh, advanced scripts uh, to our availability uh, if we open up uh, another one that I, I find very, very interesting. We can also create this one. Um, it works a little bit the same, but it's a different uh, formula actually. It cre simply creates a year to date from the specified column as well. Um, so this one is applied on a selected measure. So uh, once again, I can add this as a custom action. Um, this is creating a year to date measure. Okay, I would like to apply this on a measure. Okay, so if I head over to the first uh, measure that I created, the sum of the sales amount, I can right click, go to custom actions, and this is the one that I just created. This is creating a year to date measure. In the exact same uh, display folder, will be created a year to date measure as well. Let me quickly save this one. It will show up over here as well. Over here, perfect. Okay. So this is our year to date uh, measure that we can see over here. Let me quickly validate that it is uh, fully correct by, for example, adding a, um, uh, let me ch quickly check. Uh, let's add a specific month, um, add it over here. Um, January, let me quickly adjust uh, the sorting of the English month as well, because otherwise it's a little bit difficult. Um, to see, uh, this is the English month name. We would like to have it um, sorted uh, by the column of month number, I'm assuming month number of year, perfect. Okay, heading back over, heading over to this report once again, then uh, you can clearly see that it indeed is a year to date and it works per perfectly fine. Great. This is very, very useful. Uh, we created both of these measures uh, really instantly. We only needed this specific script. It also applies the right display folder. It also applied, applies the right naming, and it also applies the correct, um, the correct um, format string. But it doesn't stop there. We also have another adva advanced script. Um, this actually uh, does everything that we would like to, to see it doing. Um, so, for example, let me, um, it is also, it is based on a selected measure, like we can see over here, okay. So, let us quickly show what, it, what this one does. You can, once again, create this as a, um, this is creating all um, time intelligence measures. This will create a lost year. Uh, this will create a year to date, uh, a year over year. All of those variants will be created uh, instantly. Okay, so we just created this one. Uh, we go to our base measure, go to custom actions. This is creating all time intelligence measures. Bam, instantly it shows all of the measures that we exactly need. 
Okay, perfect. So um, it it actually creates all of this measure in a very, very brief um, amount of time. So let me quickly delete the measures uh, folder, delete um, the um, measure that we initially created. Uh, okay, let's start from from the beginning. Custom action. We uh, this is creating base measure. Okay, base, base measure is over here. You can cl click uh, on this measure, go to uh, and create an, an, a year to date measure, or you can immediately create all time intelligence measures, which we will do now. Saving this one will result in having all of these measures available instantly in just a few clicks. Next up is the reference versus duplicate feature uh, that is built in, in the uh, query editor in Power BI. What is the difference? Uh, duplicate versus uh, reference. Duplicate is just a one time copy of the mQuery code, so it, it's just one time copy, there is no sync at all. Uh, referencing a query is keeping your new query in sync with the referenced query, so there will be a sync between both of them. Uh, of course, the second one is preferred, if possible, to lift uh, the maintainability. Um, I think this is uh, this is uh, pretty clear, but it makes your your model a little bit easier to uh, to maintain in the long run. Next in line is avoiding bookmarks. I know there are a lot of different cases cases in which bookmarks are very very useful. Um, but try to avoid them if possible. Um, why? Because they're very, very hard to maintain, especially if you have a lot of them. There are some alternatives as well. You can create separate tabs in the same report or you can use dynamic measuring, uh, for example, by using a switch statement. Heading over to the data model. Um, yeah, of course, a good, strong, uh, clear data model will um, decide upon the performance of your uh, your Power BI report. Uh, I think that's pretty straightforward. Um, I can only strongly advise to stick to Kimball's dimensional modeling approach. Um, so try, always try to stick to uh, um, a very straightforward star scheme. Uh, of course, there will be some scenarios in which um, snowflaking uh, is, is suitable as well. But um, always try to stick to a very clear uh, star scheme if possible. Um, in this case, you not only optimize your query performance, but you also minimize your data redundancy. There are some other uh, data modeling techniques that you can apply to enhance the performance of your Power BI report. Um, we'll not discuss about, uh, we'll not elaborate on, on these ones, but in this presentation, we'll, um, we'll briefly mention them. Um, for example, uh, using of integers, uh, using of surrogate keys, role playing dimensions. For example, if you had a due date and a shipping date, you can just uh, use uh, one and the same dimension. Um, high maintainability, um, yeah, you can enable parallel loads as well if you have, uh, for example, one big fact, you can split them up um, and, and um, use several facts which can uh, load in parallel. Um, sig significantly reduces total data refresh time, of course, during an import because you load in uh, several queries at once. And try to avoid snowflake, but I already explained this one in the previous slide. Mind your date tables. This is a very important one. Um, by default, um, the auto date time feature is enabled uh, within your Power BI settings. Um, I can only strongly advise you to disable this feature. Um, yeah, it clutters and potentially drastically enlarges your data size. Every single date time column within the, the whole model that you have will have its own um, yeah, tiny date di dimension in the background under the hood. Uh, and it takes up some data set size as well. So uh, try to disable it and only use your own um, date table. Um, I can only strongly advise to do this. Um, a good date table to use is um, the the one from SQL BI? Uh, they have uh, their very own Dux date template. I really like it because it's uh, fully written in Dux, um, and it's uh, very easy uh, to adjust the date template as well. Um, okay, let me quickly uh, show you how um, the Vertibac engine works upon each of those date time columns in Dux Studio and how they can take up um, any data set size as well. 
Okay, heading over to Power BI once again. So taking a closer look at our data model, we loaded in one fact table and several dimensions. We have a dim product, we have a dim uh, subcategory, dim product category, dim sales territory, dim customer, and one dim date table. Seems pretty straightforward. Okay, navigating to the report view, uh, if we open up, up or affect uh, internet sales, you can actually see that we have a lot of different uh, date time values. For example, we have a due date, we have an order date, we have a ship date. All of these, um, all of these columns are actually uh, date time fields. You can actually see the date time um, icon next to it over here as well. But this is where uh, something, yeah, it's not that performant. Uh, let's take a closer look when heading over to the external tools and opening up a connection with uh, Duck Studio. Duck Studio will uh, connect to the Open Power BI data model, and on the left hand side of the opening, you will immediately see all of the objects that are contained within our data model. Uh, we have our yeah the the dimension and fact uh, that we already uh, we immediately recognize them. But we also have some additional tables. We have several local date tables. Those aren't really contained. Those, we didn't manually add them to our data model. They are automatically generated, um, yeah, actually uh, behind the scenes under the hood, um, are they generated for each date time uh, column that we have in our model. So um, we can actually drill through a little bit on this one as well. When opening uh, on, in the advanced uh, tab and going to the view metrics, we can actually see the Vertbec engine. Um, this is, um, thanks to the Vertbec engine, we can see all of the meta data that is contained within our uh, Power BI data model. Uh, you can see all of the different dimensions over here. Uh, the, the fact you can also see, and you see all uh, the cardinality. So how many records does every table has in this case? You can even see the percentage um, uh, based on the percentage share on the whole data set. So for example, our uh, DIM customer has about uh, approximately 34% um, um, is accountable for about 34% of the whole uh, database uh, set size. Okay, uh, you can also specify this for the specific columns um, like this. And you can also sort on this one, of course. Um, this is, yeah, fact internet sales isn't, unsurprisingly, this um, this is one of the, uh, is, has one of the most distinct values and takes up the most space in uh, in our database. But there is um, another column as well, and it's a part of the local date table. All of those local date tables, they take up space. It's pretty obvious now. When we're heading over to the summary uh, page, then you can actually see the total size of your data model. For this, particular case, uh, we have a data model which is very, very small. It's about 11 uh, megs big. Uh, but of course, you can already see uh, that the local date tables take up quite some space. Space that actually isn't uh, needed um, to be to be in our in our data model, to be a part of our data model. Um, this is a, a fair, fairly small uh, data model. You can already imagine if you have, um, instead of 10 different uh, data data time fields that you have for example 100 or, or maybe 200 or even more uh, then it can get of course um, uh, it, it can uh, drastically increase the size of your of your data set uh, okay well what is actually something that we can do about this um, I'll quickly minimize this one we can head over to the file and go to the optional settings of your power bi file and you can navigate to the options over there we will able we will be able to change the, the default behavior, um, and you need to navigate to uh, the data load. Uh, over here, you will be able to see that by default the auto date time is enabled. So what does this actually means for each date time field that you have within your data set uh, under the hood? This local date table will be created. Let me quickly uncheck this box and um, apply. Uh, what you can see afterwards is immediately all of the uh, date, all of the icons next to the uh, date time fields, they will be uh, they will be gone. Uh, when we 
uh, open up once again a connection to Duck Studio and perform the exact same thing. Um, one minute ago, we had um, a model that was about 11 megs big. Uh, when we view the metrics once again, we don't see uh, any of those le local details anymore. And we're, when we're heading over to the summary table, then we can see that our model has been uh, decreased significantly. So, uh, key takeaways, please do disable um, the auto daytime feature uh, and just host your own, uh, just create your own dim date table. This is uh, one takeaway. The second takeaway is please uh, do not load all of, your t all of your columns from all of your tables in your model. Only load the columns uh, from the tables that you will actually be reporting upon. And please just uh, ignore, don't load um, the uh, the ones that you won't be relying upon um, for for your for your report. Next up is splitting granularity to a lower cardinality level. Um, yeah, Power BI relies upon the Vertipack engine. It's uh, it's not row store based, it's column store based. So it, it mainly thinks in distinct values. Um, the more distinct values you have uh, within one column, the longer it will take. Uh, and it has a bigger impact than, for example, uh, the number of rows that you are loading in. Uh, one good question you, you could ask yourself, should you split daytime values? Well, um, the... Um, the usual answer is applicable over here. Um, it depends. <laughs> uh, in many cases, I would split it. Why? Um, because um, in many cases, you only need the date, for example. You don't need the time. Uh, so it, it re if you split it, uh, the date column will contain a lot less distinct values than, you, uh, than if you also include the time value. Um, so it's based on your case. If you only need, need the date, then of course, always split, split off the, the time part. So you will, you will end up with, um, with um, uh, a less number of uh, distinct values. Okay, we've arrived to the second part of our presentation. We just discussed about the report best practices. Now we will be uh, discussing how to resolve a slow data set refresh. Okay, uh, we have two different options within uh, Power BI, within the query editor. It's called uh, enable load for this inc including report refresh. Um, I, um, I think many of the end you, of the Power BI developers don't really uh, know what the difference is between both of them, but it's very, very uh, important that you know that you know so. Um, if you uncheck the enable load uh, property, then data won't be loaded into memory. Um, the query will still be available, but um, it won't show up in your uh, data modeling uh, or report view. Uh, so you will be able to use the data, you will be able to use the query, but it won't be able, you won't be, you, it won't show up in your data model. Um, it's very important to use this for intermediate queries. So any queries that are used um, as a part of a calculation. The second option is unchecking, including report refresh. Um, if you uncheck this one, data won't simply be refreshed. Um, it's mainly used for static data, some metadata that doesn't need any refreshing at all. It will never refresh if you uncheck the included report refresh button. Spread your data refresh schedules. Um, in many cases, you actually see that um, that um, at specific hours, for example, at eight in the morning, at 12 at night, uh, at six in the morning, those are uh, very popular uh, data set refresh um, schedule times. Uh, try to try to um, actually spread it uh, because if uh, multiple data sets are refreshing at the same time, uh, of course, uh, it will cause a traffic jam. Uh, they will um, they will uh, be lined up uh, after after each other. It will um, then they will be executed after each other. So uh, try to spread your dataset refresh schedules. The use of shared dataset refreshes, um, if possible, always try to use uh, reuse a shared dataset. Uh, why? Because it's the same dataset and it only needs one specific refresh. Uh, you can 
uh, use a live connection to prior created Power BI datasets. And with the December release of Power BI, you can also extend it uh, with the composite models. You can also extend it with additional data from other sources. Um, so you're not restricted only to use a uh, Power BI report uh, relying upon one Power BI dataset. You can actually extend it with, for example, an Excel report or, or a SQL Server or an SAP HANA data source. Um, endorsing your data sets can be very useful over here as well. Uh, so making sure that your user can see uh, whether a data set has been verified uh, by, uh, by the business that, um, that it contains actually correct uh, data. Data restrictions. Always try to reduce your data amount. You can filter, of course, your large tables um, and query folding. Make sure that query folding will be applied. Um, you can actually um, head over to your Power BI file and in the Power Query steps, you can actually uh, see the native query of your underlying data sources. For example, if you're connecting to a SQL Server or an SAP HANA source, you can see the native query, the SQL query that um, the Vertebrae engine is, um, you, is sending to, towards your, your data sources. Query folding is very important, but then because then the filter that you're applying in Power BI will also be pushed through uh, via the query that is sent to the underlying data source. So it's immediately pushed through to the uh, underlying data source. Very important, especially if you would like to um, save up some time refreshing your reports. There are some other um, things to do when it comes down to reducing your data set refresh times. Um, these are actually out of scope of this presentation, but I'll briefly mention them as well so you, you are aware of them. The incremental refresh is actually one of my favorites. Uh, based on um, on a, on some daytime parameters, you can actually set that you only would like to refresh um, a part of your data. For example, if you have very large fact table, you can only refresh, for example, the last year of the last month or something like this. Uh, so you can actually uh, only re um, refresh a, a very um, specific uh, period of time of your data. So it, in this case, you can you can leave just all of the historical data just like it was, um, and it's very very useful um, to 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 use. Um, it also is supported in data flows, and um, it's uh, possible for to set this up for multiple tables, and also you can set um, uh, priorities upon the different uh, incremental refresh um, uh, setups. Uh, manage aggregations, um, like this one uh, as well, actually. Um, with manage aggregations, you can set uh, an aggregation table. So if you have a very large uh, fact table, uh, which um, provides you with the detailed analysis, with detailed level of your data, you can create um, a similar table, but only on an aggregated level. Uh, and you can say, okay, Power BI, now for this visualization, only rely upon um, the aggregation table. If you need additional information, if you need the detailed information, then head over to the uh, bigger fact table. Uh, if you're doing it like this, uh, then you will save up a lot of time because those aggregated tables contain a lot less data and performance will be a lot faster. For the third part of this presentation, uh, we'll be discussing uh, how to evaluate the performance. Maybe one of the most interesting things to do uh, with, when it comes down to, uh, to, to the performance of a report measuring. Tracing your Power BI report, um, you can use several uh, external third party tools, uh, which you can rely upon to measure the performance of your Power BI report. Very important to remember, uh, each Power BI desktop um, file that you have open, each Power BI um, file that you have open in your Power BI desktop um, has a analysis services engine running locally as well. And to this analysis services uh, engine, you can actually connect to, and you can use several tools to do this. For example, the SQL service, the SQL server management uh, studio profile you can use. It's not really advisable, why uh, I do not advise this. It generates a lot of log. It's not that straightforward. There are other tools that uh, that makes uh, that makes your life easier when it comes down to, to tracking down the performance uh, of your Power BI report. 
Um, one that I strongly advise is uh, using Tableau Editor and um, and using Duck Studio. Both of them are very, very useful tools in a lot of different scenarios, uh, so I can only strongly advise them. Power BI is also its own, its very own per performance analyzer. It's a Power BI built-in feature, um, and it gives you actually an overview on each, uh, on the rendering time, the report rendering time, of uh, each of your visuals that are contained within your Power BI report. It shows you on the first hand side uh, the full time that, it, that the visual needs to load um, and it will be split up in the rendering time of the visual and the time it will spend on executing the underlying DAX code. Um, so it will be always split up in those two parts. If uh, performance is mainly slowing down based on the DAX code that, that is being executed, then you can um, go ahead and use DAX Studio to uh, perform further uh, analysis upon uh, the used DAX uh, measure. Okay, in the beginning of the presentation, I actually mentioned the hierarchy slicer. Um, you should always try to stick to the default uh, visuals, which uh, you can see over here, um, and not immediately uh, go for a custom visual. Why? Well, I'll immediately explain you why. Uh, the slicer that we're seeing over here is a custom uh, visual. It's um, the hierarchy slicer and was actually um, used a lot uh, up until six months ago, six to eight months ago. Uh, it wasn't, you weren't able to uh, create hierarchies within your slicer. It wasn't uh, supported in the default uh, slicer, which Power BI offers. So a lot of people, um, they opted for the hierarchy slicer, which was a custom visual. Okay, let's take a close look at this one. So um, it actually works. It, it is exactly what it should, uh, it should do. Uh, but we would like to see the performance about this one. How can you open um, the performance analyzer? Just go to the view ribbon and open the performance analyzer. I'm going to um, make the other um, paint a little bit smaller. Um, so you can actually um, start the recording uh, upon this one. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger the report. Um, I'm going to, for example, select a specific uh, value over here and um, doing so, this will trigger the report to perform a, a refresh. What we can see over here is um, it's called the product filter. Uh, it takes about uh, 700 milliseconds. The second one, it took about 900 milliseconds uh, for it to, um, to load, to fully render. Um, so um, what is it actually is involved? Um, it's always split up in three different parts. One, the DEX query, so the actual execution of the DEX query that is behind. Uh, in this case, it will just simply um, uh, go and, and, and pick up all of the different uh, product category names from that table. Then uh, the visual display, how long will it take uh, for this visual to render? And this is quite a long time, like you can see over here. And then we have another one uh, which can um, which can be uh, something else as well. Uh, you can um, you can get more into de detail by using the actually about uh, the other part. Okay, uh, so for this one, 700 and 900 um, milliseconds. When we, for example, change this visualization with uh, the default one, because in the meantime uh, the default Power BI slicer it does support hierarchy, so now you can use this one. Um, when we start recording once again and uh, we trigger the report once again, what you can immediately see is there is a huge difference in uh, the the time it, it uh, the the time that uh, the uh, slicer visualization actually uh, needs. Um, you can see the first time 500 milliseconds, the second one um, less than 400 milliseconds. This is a lot faster. It's a it's approximately two times faster, and this is only with a very, very small, um, with a very, very small higher uh, level um, number of hierarchies. So not a lot of data that you can see over here. Uh, once it gets bigger, of course, the difference will um, will be bigger as well. So um, I hope um, it's a little bit clear for you guys that you can analyze the um, the performance of each of these visuals because each of these visuals have their own uh, 
um, um, uh, division into Dux query um, um, duration, visual display duration, and the other one. Um, and it can help you guys in um, in um, moving forward and uh, and solving performance issues. Then we also have the best practice analyzer. Uh, this is a very recent one. It has been uh, recently added within uh, the Tabular editor. Um, and what it actually does is it validates your data model against best practice rules. Uh, so you can, yeah, it's the easiest way to compare it is to, to compare it with a word spell checker. So it just checks your text um, and it validates whether it's, it's correct or it, is, or it simply isn't. Uh, you can set up your own rules within uh, the best practice analyzer and um, you, can, um, you can check the validity of your uh, data model based upon these rules. Some examples are uh, performance, naming conventions, maintenance, formatting, error prevention, DEX expressions, and so on. Um, I'll quickly show you guys how you can do it yourself, how you can easily set it up yourself within Power BI, uh, within Tabular Editor. Let's dive into it. Okay, a few weeks ago, Michael Kowalski of the Power BI team, uh, he communicated about the use of uh, the best, best practice rules within Power BI, within uh, Tabular Editor. Um, Please uh, make sure you also uh, read this blog because he clearly mentions how you can uh, set up a connection to um, the, the predefined rules. And so Microsoft defined a, a set of um, best practice rules for your data model and they are contained within one place and you can integrate them in your Tabular Editor uh, instance as well. Um, okay, how does this actually work? Um, we're heading over to our report once again, uh, opening up an instance in Tabular Editor. Um, okay. And when you go to the tools section and choose for your rules, um, after, of course, having laid the correct connection to the rules that Microsoft applies, uh, you will be able to see the overview of all the different rules. So they create several rules based on DAX expressions, error prevention, formatting, maintenance, naming conventions, performance, etc. All of these rules actually check something um, and um, try to validate your data model upon this rule. Okay, having said that, you can actually run the best practice analyzer and it will automatically run all of these tests. All of these rules will be um, your data model will be checked uh, based upon all of these rules. And um, apparently I still need to do, uh, I still have to do some uh, work uh, for my data model to, to get it fully optimized uh, based on the Microsoft rules. Um, let us quickly pick up uh, one of those rules and to illustrate how it actually works. Um, when we, for example, um, head over um, to this rule, the hide foreign keys rule, it's, uh, one of the rules that they um, that they added was uh, that both sides of each relationship, uh, so the, both of the keys, um, they should be hidden in your data model because it, it, it in most cases it doesn't really um, it isn't used in in the in the visualization itself. Okay, so uh, what we can do is we can. Um, we can generate a fixed script. We can immediately apply the fix as well, but I would like to see it first in the script. Has been copied uh, to my clipboard. I can paste it in uh, the advanced script over here. Uh, and then what it actually does is it simply uh, lists all of the keys of my relationships. Um, and it, um, yeah, it, it generates a script that it will just simply hide all of those keys. So uh, heading over to, to the data mobile. Um, here you can see you can clearly see all of the um, all of the uh, the keys uh, for example we have the order date key um, let let me pick out another one maybe a more easy one um, we have for example the sales territory key all of those um, so all of those are contained within this script and you can easily execute it over here after execution and you of course uh, apply the changes um, your uh, model over here will be applied, will be upgraded, updated as well. Um, so you will see that all of these uh, rules, uh, all of these um, fixes have been applied according to the rule um, that foreign keys should be hidden. 
of course you can change uh, these rules yourself based upon your um, your own best practices based upon your own environment uh, it's very easy to create your own rules clone rules edit rules or delete any any of the microsoft based rules so make sure to check it out it actually simply works like word spell checker so it's very very useful to um to to uh to to uh choose for having said that um always start, try to stay on top of your power bi game so uh, power bi is updating on a monthly basis in each of those updates um, a lot of different new features um, are released every single time for example the latest major one was the one in december um, for example the direct query uh, composite model for power bi data sets have has been uh, released uh, in that update uh, together with along with uh, a lot of different other in very interesting features so make sure to check out the power bi blogs and any the other uh, bloggers or speakers that are um, that are um, sharing content about the power bi if you would like some additional information on any of the topics that i just discussed during my presentation um, i've actually written a blog about this one it's called 10 performance tips to speed up your power bi reports um, and you can uh, read it on our Lytics website, which is the website of our consultancy firm. Um, read it on my personal blog, which is called thedatatrain.be. Okay, having said that, we've reached our destination. We've managed to turn our slow steam locomotive into a high-speed train report. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Make sure to get in touch over LinkedIn or uh, Twitter. I'm very active on both of those channels, so make sure to add me on both of those channels as well. Thank you all for your attention.